Hello, my name's Bennett Carr, and I'm delighted to welcome you as Headmaster of King Edward VI School to our virtual open morning. I'm speaking to you from the Headmaster's study in the wonderful ancient pedagogue's house. By the miracles of modern technology, I'll be joined by two of our students, Theo Richter in Year 7, who will be able to tell you about his first full year at the school, and Neil Asar, our head boy, who will be able to shine some light on his past six years at the school. Now you, no doubt, will be considering a number of different schools for September 2021, and I think there are a couple of questions that you need to ask at every school you visit. Is it a good school and why? And would my son be happy here? There's something there in the wild It's a reflection of me People fight for survival Ofsted judged us to be an outstanding school where pupils thrive and achieve exceptionally well. The Daily Telegraph described us as an exemplary all-boys grammar school with a unique and inspiring history. The Financial Times said, King Edward VI School acts as a magnet for those parents who want the best education for their children. Whilst the Good Schools Guide concluded that, if all state schools were like us, then the independent system would be struggling. In the summer's examinations in 2019, our A-level pass rate was 100%, with a record 88% of papers graded A star to B, with no fewer than 67 students obtaining three A grades or better, including 17 students who took up their places at Oxbridge Colleges. These results once again ranked KES amongst the top 10 co-educational state sixth forms in the country, and were the best results of all schools in Warwickshire state or independent. At GCSE, where students typically study at least 10 GCSEs, over 80% of the papers received those top 9 to 7 grades. These results once again ranked KS in the top 10 of all boys grammar schools nationally and were, as with A-levels, the best results in Warwickshire. In telling you this, it's probably worth noting that all but one of those above us nationally are super selective grammar schools located in densely populated areas so for a town grammar school in semi-rural Warwickshire, we can consider that we have done pretty well. These results, when combined with the record A-level results, gave us a national rank of 12th in the Sunday Times top 500 state schools and top in the West Midlands. It is, of course, easy to band about statistics, especially when they are good. There are some that assume that success like this is inevitable in a grammar school such as this, and that our students can get these results simply by turning up. The Department of Education's Progress 8 measure, based on GCSE results, shows the strong progress made by our students compared to children at the same starting point at the age of 11. Our students achieved two-thirds of a grade higher across each of their GCSEs 
compared to other pupils nationally who were performing at the same level as them at the age of 11. Following A-levels, virtually all of our students go on to higher education at good universities, art and music colleges. A significant number gain places at the University of Oxford and Cambridge, and a large number move on to study medicine, law and engineering. An increasing number are choosing to apply for the best universities overseas, or are applying for higher level apprenticeships. As I have said, this academic success is not inevitable. It does depend upon first-rate teaching and high expectations. And it's rooted in the belief that successful schooling is not just about passing exams at the highest level. It's also about enjoying the subjects you study and developing new interests in and out of the classroom. The curriculum we offer is broad, balanced and challenging. The best of the old and the best of the new, if you like where the study of Latin, the traditional arts and humanities coexist in equal value with the latest developments in science, computing and technology. All boys in the lower school now study Mandarin alongside Latin and have a choice of European languages from year eight onwards. There are a wide range of subject options, especially in the sixth form. Indeed, we offer some subjects rarely found outside the independent sector. We complete Key Stage 3 by the end of Year 8, and in our three-year Key Stage 4, as well as GCSEs, we offer AS level modules in Maths. In the sixth form, alongside A-levels, we offer the Extended Project Qualification, as well as a host of enrichment options, including the likes of Ancient Greek, Engineering Education, Young Enterprise, Sports Leadership and Leaders in Service Awards. Unlike many schools, all of our subjects are taught by graduates who are specialists in their chosen subject. Teaching and learning is, of course, our core business, and in a world of television and smartphones, iPads, and essentially passive entertainment, there is always the danger that boys will gravitate towards, and indeed prefer, a classroom style where the teacher is the focus of the lesson. Tells the boys how it is, tells them to learn it, tests them, and then fills in the gaps. This can be a highly successful way of getting grades, and there is a definite place for such teaching, but we believe that there is much more needed for a true education. Take me back to the jungle. Teachers here use both traditional methods and emerging technologies to deliver vivid, real and relevant lessons that aim to interest and challenge the boys. We also try and distill into our students the importance, indeed, the attractions of academic study in itself, and to, above all, challenge themselves to aim high. There are virtues of being a small school. We're one of the smallest 11 to 18 schools in the country. Our small size enables us to focus on the individual. What is their potential? and how can we support them to reach it? Our individual student tracking scheme reflects this. It's not based on class lists or rank order. It's about monitoring how each individual is progressing against challenging personal targets and supporting them to make further progress. The academic timetable keeps us fairly busy, but it's only part of the story. What Ofsted found was outstanding provision of additional enrichment activities and high participation rates from beginners to experts. Of course, Getting the best grades will ensure that boys leave here with the widest range of opportunities to explore their future. However, what really counts is they leave here not only with the best possible grades, but also truly educated in a way which prepares them for life and ready to take that road less travelled. Extracurricular provision is, of course, a key discriminator between schools, and it is a major strength here and one which the school is rightly proud. The calendar of events and activities is simply remarkable and, in my experience, rarely matched in the state or, indeed, the independent sector. 
For example, over 300 students take individual instrumental music lessons, many of whom perform in choirs and orchestras. Our Year 7 scheme, which funds all boys to have one term of individual music tuition, clearly pays dividends and ensures that music is exceptionally strong. Sport punches well above its weight, with over 160 players representing the school in sports fixtures each Saturday. Individual excellence is regularly rewarded with regional and international honours, whilst our teams have the opportunity to participate in national competitions and international tours. In the last few years, to South Africa, Hungary, Germany, Poland, France, Malta, Scotland, Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados. Last year, Edinburgh was the destination for our under-14 rugby and hockey players. The senior hockey players travelled to Holland and the senior netballers ventured to Spain, whilst the senior rugby squad, having toured Australia, Argentina and the USA and Canada in the last six years, were due to head to South Africa this summer, but were sadly prevented by the pandemic. It is only right and proper that in Shakespeare's school, drama plays such an important part of life here, with a number of productions being performed each year. These include performances by Edwards Boys Company, who annually tour to Oxford, Cambridge and London universities, and have in the last few years played at the Shakespeare's Globe to great critical acclaim. Indeed, they were honoured to be the first guest company to perform at the Globe's new indoor space, the Sam Wanamaker Playhouse, and were also the first guest company to perform at the RSC's redeveloped The Other Place. Last summer, they took their latest production to Italy, having been to southern France the previous year. Meanwhile, our drama department have begun biennial preparations for their performances at Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There is also a fine tradition of outdoor education at the school. World Challenge and the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme are to do with self-reliance, facing serious challenges and working sometimes in arduous conditions. In recent years there have been World Challenge expeditions to India and Morocco and there are currently 129 students enrolled in the DOV scheme, including all bar 5 students in Year 10 on the Bronze Award and 21 students working towards their Gold Award. What is particularly impressive about the extracurricular programme here is the fact that it is characterised by both diversity and excellence. All pupils are able to participate, whilst those with a genuine talent have an arena in which to perform at the highest level. If I had the time, I'd tell you about the overseas trips, the visiting theatre groups and authors, the academic competitions, the cross-curricular days, and the huge number of other activities and societies, from chess to astronomy. But unfortunately, we simply don't have time. Neil Sar is head boy and has seen what the school has got to offer, and I've asked him to speak to you from his perspective on life here, and he might be able to fill in some of the gaps. My name is Nile, the head boy here, and it is my privilege to share with you some of the wonderful experiences I've had while at KES and give you an insight into life as a student. I still remember what it felt like exactly six years ago when I was in your position. Butterflies were whirling about in my stomach, and I was asking myself, is this the right school for me? Hand on heart, I wish I could be back where you are and relive the journey of choosing KES and starting from year seven all over again. The jump up to secondary school, perhaps, was my biggest worry. The thought of walking through the gates of a new school where year seven me could barely carry my rucksack while towering sixth form rugby players tussled past seemed quite frankly daunting. But right from day one, I realized KES was nothing like this. I think the word that best describes us is community. Being a relatively small school with 90 students in each year from 7 to 11 means that you'll get to know everyone in your year group and easily make new friends. Being in a small, friendly environment can be especially felt in the classroom. All the teachers have their doors wide open and are never too busy for a chat or to offer a helping hand. It isn't just the friendships I made with students in my year that stick with me, but the bonds forged with students from all year groups across the school. Something I really liked was the vertical tutor group system. When you move up into year eight, you join a group of students from various years of the school with whom you're registered and spend tutor time each week. Having people from my tutor group I recognized around the school and could talk to, whether it be a prefect who was manning the lunch queue or a year 10 who I sat next to in orchestra was something I really valued at the school. Without a doubt, Engaging in the sheer variety of extracurricular activities and opportunities on offer has been the absolute highlight of my time here. To put it into perspective, 
had a look on my phone calendar and went back to one of the busiest weeks in year nine. Trust me when I say it took a lot of scrolling to get there, but eventually I made it. Monday kicked off with house quiz. Tuesday was choir practice. Wednesday, I had a hockey match. Thursday evening was an inter-school debating competition before putting on a school play on the Friday. This is what I love about KES. For everyone, there's something exciting to wake up for and look forward to at school each day. Drama is a big part of KES and a part of the life at school which I've thoroughly enjoyed. Being a member of Edwards Boys, an all boys acting company, has given me opportunities to participate in several productions and perform at some incredible venues, including Shakespeare's Globe in St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and even touring Genoa in Italy. There's also the school play, which takes place down the road at the RSC's The Other Place, and plenty of other drama groups to get involved in. If sport is more your thing, then the school has many opportunities to train each week and play in competitive fixtures against other schools in rugby, hockey, cricket and athletics, our main sports. You'll also have the chance to try your hand at some more unfamiliar sports, like fencing. My friend Louis started out in Year 7 fencing program, and now he travels across Europe representing KES and Team GB at an international level. For me though, it was the more relaxed side of sports, and the social side of it that I enjoyed, particularly participating in house events such as football and volleyball. These usually take place at lunchtime, and are well supported on the balconies of the sports hall where members of your year chant and cheer you on. In addition, the musical life at the school is another thing to get involved in. I took part in the free music lesson scheme for the first term in year seven and picked up the violin and piano. Playing the violin led me to take part in the school orchestra, strings group, and even set up my own string quartet with which we play at weddings and events around town. The music tour to Belgium last year was something I thoroughly enjoyed too. From saxophone quartet to the Indian music group, wind band to singing in chapel choir our Christmas service, the variety of musical groups to join and try are endless. There are even more opportunities beyond this, whether it's competing in the Delancey chess competition, climbing and camping for the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, gazing at the stars in the astronomy club, or arguing away at debating society. There really is something for everyone. The support my friends and I received to achieve our potential inside and out of the classroom was something I treasure from my time here. Through a rounded education within this vibrant, friendly and aspirational school community, I've come to make some of my closest friends, found myself as an individual and forged memories that will last a lifetime. I hope you take full advantage of this virtual open morning. Thank you. Students come to us most commonly as the only boy from their school. Indeed, Year 7 we've got children coming from 58 different schools. They come from a very wide area, including Solihull and Coventry in the north, towards Banbury in the east and Evesham in the west, and down into the Cotswolds in the south. It's important, therefore, that we provide a secure and happy community, and that studies are undertaken in a framework of good discipline and pastoral care. We have a well-developed induction scheme for our new Year 7 entrance. In addition to the two induction evenings, every boy and their parents meets with me individually prior to starting in September. Each boy here is allocated to a form where the tutor, who sees them every day, looks after them and monitors their progress. Indeed, the pastoral care system received an outstanding rating in two recent surveys of students and parents carried out by an external contractor. The results of the Ofsted questionnaire completed by our parents in 2017 revealed that 100% of our parents believe that their children are well looked after at the school. Theo Richter joined KES at the beginning of this academic year and is best placed to tell you about that provision. He is going to tell you about his personal experiences settling in as a new Year 7. Hi, I'm Theo. Year 7 at KES seemed to me as if it really started when I was still in Year 6. Specifically, when I came to the Levi Foxhall to choose my instrument. I remember that everything felt so alien in contrast to my small familiar primary school. Even the name Levi Fox sounded strange. Who or what was Levi Fox and how did you pronounce it? 
What I didn't know, though, was that within a few months, I'd feel just as at home at KES as I had done in primary school. Incidentally, on that day, I chose to learn the trumpet, even though at the time, my now teacher commented on my embouchure, and I spent the summer slightly concerned that I should see a doctor about it, but as I learned in September, it's actually a good thing. So I'm going to take you through my experience of Year 7 and of how I changed from that rather terrified Year 6 boy choosing a trumpet to feeling like a fully-fledged member of KES, and hopefully in doing so will answer any questions you may have. As I said before, Year 7 seemed to start in Year 6, and I attended an induction evening, a transition day with my new form, and also a sports in introduction afternoon at Manor Road, all before September. Looking back, these events really did give me a flavour of what life at KES would be like. Encouragingly, after each of these events, I was able to say hello to a few more friendly faces. So, moving on to September and the big day itself. First, I had to navigate the school bus, get off at the right stop, and find my way to the school. This was easier than I thought, as I soon realised I just had to follow the KES blazers. During the transition sessions before, I had been repeatedly reassured that I would absolutely, definitely, certainly make new friends, and I was counting on this quite strongly, as I was the only person from my primary school. When the first day came, I still had my doubts, but by the end of that day, and certainly by the end of that week, I did actually find this to be true. Heartened by this experience, I decided to put my faith in the second piece of advice I had been given which was to get involved and try out as many new things as possible. This was sound advice, and I can tell you from experience, it also applies to the canteen. I joined fencing, maths challenge, brass ensemble and epic ensemble, which is a drama club. Through these clubs, I met students from different forms and different year groups. Epic ensemble in particular helped me build my confidence, and this in turn led to me auditioning for and gaining a part in the house drama competition. You may be wondering why I haven't mentioned lessons and homework yet, and I will get to these, but the fact is that for me, the extracurricular activities and events are really what made me feel part of the KES community. Many of my friends have loved playing in the rugby teams, and I have been working hard on my hockey skills, hoping to make the team in Year 8. On a residential trip to the National Sports Centre in Lillishall, I showed myself a willing and enthusiastic participant across the board, in squash, table tennis, cricket, judo and trampolining, all with, all with only moderate success. Lillishall was by far the biggest highlight of Year 7, as this was when I had the chance to really get to know the classmates I had spent less time with. So, moving on to lessons. These are very different from primary school, but in an exciting way. I like the fact that we move from classroom to classroom, and I'm yet to get lost. The art room and the drama studio both have really special atmospheres, the DT workshop is full of machines I didn't even know existed, and the science labs have a rather unmistakable smell. In the subjects I had already studied before, such as maths, English and science, I found the biggest change to be that we are challenged to be more independent. And of course there are also the new subjects, such as Latin and Mandarin. One of the most satisfying moments I've had this year was when I could read and understand the menu at a Chinese restaurant. Right, on to homework. The bad news is, there is homework. The good news is, it's manageable if you manage it, and it does help you understand better what you're learning in school. I had one weekend, early on, when I'd let several pieces of homework build up because I just couldn't get myself to start them. That was not an experience I wanted to repeat, so I slowly learned to be more organised and to sit down and get on with it, rather than rearranging my pencil case. I didn't know at the time, but this would be invaluable to me during the school closure, when I was more responsible for organising my day. Thankfully, I had lots of support from the teachers, who followed up work with feedback and class Zoom sessions. I'd like to conclude with some of the discoveries that have played an unexpectedly important part in my first year here, and I hope you find them as reassuring as I did. 1. I didn't realise how much I'd love my bus journey, both to prepare for and to digest the day. 2. I didn't realise quite how many essential and non-essential things my blazer pockets could house. 3. 
I didn't realise how attached I would become to Stratford itself. 4. I didn't realise what, what a big difference joining just one club would make. 5. I didn't realise how much the older students would look out for me. And 6. I didn't realise how little there would be to worry about. Thank you. It is also important too that staff have a good induction when they come to the school. The staff here is a really good mix in terms of male-female balance, age and experience. And it's a matter of pride to schools like this to have staff promoted to senior leadership posts in other top schools. And I'm pleased to say that the school has always been able to make excellent appointments of their successors. I'm also pleased to note that the staff enjoy truly outstanding support from parents, governors and trustees at the school. We have some wonderful historic buildings, Shakespeare's schoolroom no less. But we also have many excellent new additions to the site. You will see a new science block which opened in 2008, a drama studio opened in 2010, and a German suite and food technology facility in 2011. You will also note that every classroom is fitted with a data projector and whiteboard, providing a first class learning environment in all of our subject areas. You really must come and visit our ancient guild hall containing William Shakespeare's schoolroom at some point which has just benefited from a £1.8 million restoration. The broadcaster, Michael Wood, described it as one of the most important, atmospheric and magical buildings in the whole of Great Britain, and we are proud to continue to use it for teaching each morning. So what of the future? We converted to be an academy in 2011. This gives us even greater independence and self-governance within the state sector, and allows us to further mould our educational provision to cater for our students' unique skills and talents. I am pleased to report that in 2017, we completed a £2.2 million project to construct a new three-storey building, housing a new library and sixth form study, the English department, and a suite of computer rooms, plus the development of two new science laboratories and a state-of-the-art design studio. We also have ambitious plans to improve our sports facilities with planning permission already received for a new AstroTurf pitch at our Manor Road sports grounds. Before I conclude this presentation, I'd first like to say that you should not be deterred by the fact that the school is oversubscribed. We've responded in recent years to the government's legislation that has allowed outstanding schools to expand and have increased the number of pupils we will admit to 87. Please do note, however, that the work here is academically demanding and it is in all of our interests and especially your sons that you are convinced that he will cope and will be happy at this school. For those of you who apply and take the test, I wish you every success. I hope you've enjoyed today's virtual open morning and that it gives you a true flavour of the school. We are academically strong but we're not an examination factory. We are genuinely committed to offering a broad education in its truest sense. And we offer personalisation, not in the sense of the latest educational fad, but in the terms of our ability to know our students, know their families, know their circumstances, and work alongside them to achieve their best. I believe that by any measure, this is an outstanding school. Ofsted thought so, and even a certain Mr Gove, when he was Secretary of State for Education, described us as a wonderful school but you really shouldn't just take his word for it. I hope this presentation has enabled you to judge for yourselves. One day Thank you for watching. soon I will fly I know I am free I'm feeling alive Take me back to the jungle Take me back to the jungle